when it comes to monitoring, sometimes there's government agencies and sometimes there's private agencies, maybe funded by government bodies or maybe funded by the pharmaceutical industry. And one of these monitoring agencies or a group that has come together is very, very oddly specific. They are tracking all, all of the social media regarding discussions about vaccine hesitancy. Who are they doing it for? What are they doing it for? Who's funding them? Well, if you want to know what I'm talking about, then maybe I will have to reference you to this ad by Vector that you may have seen. I'm not sure if you followed what that video said. It almost put me into a trance. I'm not sure they're accomplishing what they want by putting everyone to, a sleep, uh, to sleep. But clearly, uh, we now have a group. Project Vector is tracking those of us that are uh, questioning the safety of vaccines, which uh, I guess they're describing as misinformation. We did a little bit of research, actually, into this group. There's more and more, you know, murmurings about who is Project Vector? What's it up to? It looks like they're trying to supply information to uh, investigative reporters and different uh, medical uh, people and systems to figure out how to shift the clearly growing movement. You, the people, smart, intelligent people that are now asking the right questions about safety. How are things tested? You know, why uh, can't they prove with a vax versus unvax study? that vaccines uh, make you healthier. Uh, behind, though, Project Vector is a guy named Joe Smizer. There's a few videos out there, one where he gives a huge presentation about Project Vector. Obviously, I think, uh, you know, out there uh, trying to raise money for his group. And then he did a Q&A. So you'll see a couple of those videos. But first, I want to just let Joe describe what Project Vector is in his own words. Take a look at this. Project Vector was set up specifically for vaccine misinformation. Project Vector, at the moment, PGP, Public Good Projects, is the only organization in the United States that monitors continuously, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day of the year, um, vaccine misinformation. And what we do um, every day is large-scale behavior change programs for public health. So we monitor all data from publicly available media sources, so any social media data we can get our, our hands on, but also television, uh, like broadcast news, uh, print, so newspapers and magazines, pretty much every website, um, just anything we can purchase and analyze using um, big data techniques. It's what do we do with them once we find them? That's the real question that, that we're faced with. Why are we losing? Why are the vaccine safety people losing so badly? I think we need a really, really dramatic change in our tactics. We don't know what we're doing. We need help. We need dramatic changes in strategies and tactics. Uh, it has not plateaued and things are getting worse. And I don't think we can solve this problem without acknowledging that things are getting worse every day. Not, not, they're not getting better. You do need help. <laughs> in fact, you know, it was really ironic. So, uh, I mean, this thing goes on for like an hour or so, but the gist of it is essentially we can't just rely upon the millions of dollars funneled into brainwashing through mainstream media on CNN and MSNBC and Fox. That's not getting the job done. Uh, we've got to start reaching out to the people and let the people fight for the truth uh, about vaccines and, and the information there. But I just, Joe, I mean, honestly, you know, one of your big issues is 
why, why is the message of vaccine hesitancy spreading so rigorously across the Internet? I guess you didn't get the memo. You didn't get the memo from the World Health Organization uh, meeting last uh, December in Geneva, Switzerland, where uh, Heidi Larson had something to say about the vaccine misinformation. You might find this interesting uh, while you do your incredible deep dive in how to make a difference in this world. Joe, take a look at this. I spend a lot of time talking, particularly in the last six months, uh, with tech companies, Facebook, WhatsApp, Pulsar, Twitter, Instagram, WeChat, um, Weibo. Um, they have a lot of fingers pointing at them to fix, fix the misinformation problem. But it's not so simple. One, the biggest problem is a lot of it's not misinformation. Our problem is, as we've heard in the last 48 hours, that there's not anything 100%. And what actually can legally, without creating a censorship thing, can we absolutely say this is misinformation? Because we have a lot of ambiguity in the safety field, and we have to come to terms with that. So we have to think about it differently than deleting misinformation but building trust so people are willing to put up with a certain amount of risk because they believe in it enough. They believe in our work, what we're doing, and that it's in their interest. You see, Joe, uh, from the beginning, you're going to have to recognize what battle you're fighting here. Much like I had uh, you know, earlier on this show, Andrew Kaufman, who was discussing that we don't even know what this virus is or where it came from or the particle it was in, so we may not even be looking for the right thing. Clearly, you're fighting the wrong battle if you're already calling it misinformation because the truth is, as Heidi Larson said, it's not misinformation. Uh, it is a fact that vaccines were not tested against placebos. That's just a fact. Uh, it is a fact that we just won a lawsuit, the Informed Consent Action Network, the that's the nonprofit that supports the high wire. We won a lawsuit against the CDC where they essentially were asked, prove to us vaccines don't cause autism, specifically in the first six vaccines given in the first six months of life. And they could not provide a single study that referenced those six vaccines. Well, there was one study that proved our point by the Institute of Medicine saying that uh, there are no studies that show that DTaP does or does not cause autism. There just are no studies, hasn't been studied. So these are the problems you're going to have, Joe, and you're really off on the wrong foot if you're trying to in attack an invisible enemy on the wrong uh, battlefield. The battlefield is truth. Uh, as Hardy Larson said, your job is going to actually, how do you sell the fact that some people do die from vaccines, some people do get injured. We have very little data to know how many that is, but let's put a big bow on it. Uh, you got to work on the bow tying part of this, Joe. But anyway, um, you know, while you were looking into this, and obviously I hope you're watching this since we did make your top 10, uh, I'm assuming that, uh, and you know that we reached out to Joe, by, everyone should know this, we reached out to Joe Miser, asked Smizer, asked him if he wanted to come on the show. Uh, surprisingly, we haven't gotten a response yet, but... Um, Let's just show you uh, some of the lists. Maybe you're on it. Maybe you're not. Take a look at this. There are fewer than 200 um, leaders, um, verified leaders of the anti-vax movement in the United States, and yet they have an, an incredibly disproportionate influence. You know, if you shut down the accounts of those 200 individuals, that's not stopping vaccine opposition. It is an enormous movement, um, but, and it feels, it, it can feel impossible to wrap your head around it or do anything about it or address it. Um, it's uh, a lot of it is outside of the domain of the uh, comfort level uh, of people in public health. But if you've, if you've decided as a society that, um, th that the only people who get to talk about vaccines being safe and effective is public health, well then that sets you up for an enormous problem. Here are the top authors on Twitter that create over 60% of all misinformation about vaccines. Well, there you have it. If we just bring up that list, uh, we're striving for number one. But here, this is our Twitter account, uh, twitter.com, right there at the bottom, number 10, High Wire Talk, coming in you know, right behind Rob Schneider. Look out, Rob. We're coming after you. But, of course, this doesn't account for the millions of you that are currently watching the show around the world on Facebook here or YouTube or our, um, our own website, The High Wire 
Facebook.com. But we're proud. Uh, we're proud to have made the top 10. I'm Joe. I'm still waiting for the, uh, I guess, is it a trophy coming in the mail, a medal, something like that? I'm assuming it should be here any day. Um, you know, it, it's fascinating, isn't it? Listen to what they're saying, though, and listen to what they're up against. Uh, even if you got rid of the top 200, you know, influences or sites of which uh, I guess we're in the top 10, he says it won't make a difference. It won't stop it because this is an enormous movement. Can you say it? Hashtag winning. Woo! Uh, we're on top of the world here, and clearly, as we keep showing you over the last several years, more and more reporting, whether it's the WHO having an entire weekend to discuss this, or Joe Smizer, you know, creating Project Vector uh, to try and track all of this. No one knows what to do. And believe me, uh, there is a lot of funding uh, trying to figure this all out. And honestly, I don't understand what the deal is, right? I mean, you don't really, it doesn't, it's not hard to track. All you have to do is come to the high wire, and I say everything we think here on the high wire, everything we think about science and all the peer-reviewed science that backs up our point. Uh, meanwhile, you can track us, or you can just tune in the high wire and watch what we're doing. Um, but let's look at the money, right? I mean, whenever we look at these things, we try to understand what's happening. What's happening in this COVID-19 pandemic? Who's behind all of this? You obviously got to see who can fund it, what's going on here. We did just a slight dive into Project Vector. So let me just take you on a little ride here of what's really or who or, you know, it is behind this. Take a look at this. If you go to the site Project Vector, uh, what comes up, this is the project is a collaboration of the Public Good Projects. Uh, you hear in reference PGP and the New York State Health Foundation. We were curious about that. What is the New York State Health Foundation. Well, when you go to the New York State Health Foundation, it says in our history, our roots are in insurance. New York State Health was established as a private foundation to receive the charitable, charitable funds resulting from the conversion of Empire Blue Cross Blue Shield from a nonprofit organization to a for profit corporation since beginning operations in 2006. Well, if you look at the money brought in by this foundation, it's quite gigantic. New York State Health Foundation, here are the financial statements from 2018 and 2017. And what you will see is 2017, $304 million they brought in uh, from their donor base. 2018, a slight drop. I guess they've dropped the ball a little bit. They only uh, brought, including assets, of course, right? And, they, uh, and then in 2018, it's dropped down to Um That's a lot of money, folks. It's a lot of money to uh, do these jobs of tracking people and figure out where you are and figure out how to stop you. That's a really weird time in health, isn't it, where you're being tracked and how do we silence people from having open conversations about their health well you know to try and get an understanding of how they perceive us and how they perceive themselves and the finances that are behind all sides of this take a look at what joe had to say uh, funding is difficult to determine almost all these groups fundraise so there are open calls for for funding um uh there are some wealthy business people leaders in this movement get speaking fees uh, documentaries are made and you, you know, in some cases you pay to view the documentary. Funding wise, it's um, more disparate and disconnected than public health. We spend many, many millions of dollars a year uh, promoting vaccines. So there's actually much more funding on the side of, of vaccines. They're, they're a true grassroots movement. <laughs> they're just like every grassroots movement, they're trying to raise money any way they can. We still don't really understand what, where a lot of this funding comes from because uh, it's so grassroots. It's a true grassroots movement. We spend millions and millions of dollars on the pharma side trying to promote the idea that vaccines are awesome, even though they've never been tested for safety. But we really don't know where the funding is coming from. It's like total, true, real grassroots, meaning you. But let's be clear. Joe Smizer wants you to stop supporting the high wire, to stop supporting the legal efforts at ICanDecide.org. 
uh, because the millions that pharma is spending and the millions that the New York State, whatever the heck it was called, um, is, is spending uh, through PGP and Project Vector is not getting the job done. And frankly, folks, they're admitting it, right? They are going to pour more and more and more millions into trying to thwart us in every state, in every country around the world. And we, the grassroots, you, the people, are the only thing that stands in their way. So I want to point out that we work hard to make it to this top 10 spot. Uh, hopefully one day we'll be at the number one spot. But clearly we are on the radar, and you have made that possible. And though I, I honestly, when you watch this video and you watch Joe Smizer sitting on his couch uh, like he's sitting in a dorm room somewhere, I'm not quite sure how talented this guy is, and I don't get a sense that he has a very deep understanding, even though he seems to be selling himself in a really big way to whoever is paying him. What I would love to see you do right now is can we use Project Factor in this moment right now and Joe Smizer calling you grassroots people out as something that must be stopped? Can we make this like the biggest fundraising video that's ever been put out? I think that'd be really awesome. You want to spite Joe Smizer. You want to really give it to, uh, you know, the insurance companies and the 200 or $300 million they're bringing in a year to try and stop you. Let's show them that the more you fight us, the bigger we become which is exactly what Senator Richard Pan did to us back in California. Just go to ICanDecide.org, push on the donate button, and become a recurring donor right now. We're, we're asking for $20 for 2020. You can donate it to our, the legal fund and all the legal work. We've got lawsuits in New York State right now. We're working on lawsuits going to the International uh, Criminal Court, all sorts of, sorts of great stuff, not including this amazing show that brings you the truth every single week and great interviews like the one we just did with Dr. Andrew uh, Kaufman. But here's the point. We, you know, you guys have really been supporting us. It's awesome we're here, but I am going to be honest with you. You are well short of the $272 million they got on their side, okay? So why don't we do this? Let's make this a rocking record-breaking weekend on Project Vector's behalf. Please, if you have not donated before and you seem to agree or want, have been agreeing with the high wire, just $20 for 2020 is what we're asking from those that can do it. If you can only afford a dollar a month, then sign up for a dollar a month. If you can afford a thousand dollars a month, then please do that. We are only going to expand our reach, create more programming, and bring more lawsuits, and make sure that they fail over at Project Vector. Let me be, a, please, make it possible for me next Tuesday to call Joe Smizer and say, Joe, I just want to thank you for your incredible videos and your dynamic personality because it helped us raise more money than we ever have in seven days. Why don't you help me do that? That would be awesome. Obviously, you know it's going to a good cause, and it's a pretty heavy lift we got going on here against the entire pharmaceutical institution that is trying to take all of your freedoms away. If you like that clip, then be sure to check out our live broadcast of The High Wire every Thursday morning at 11 a.m. Pacific time. You can watch it on Facebook, YouTube, iTunes, and Twitter. We'll see you there.